Hey guys, Marshall from Going Gear Shot Show 2015 in Las Vegas. Here with uh, Eric Glesser, son of Sal Glesser, the founder of Spyderco. And Eric is going to talk to us about the new Spyderco products for this year. So I'm really excited. For those of you that don't know, Eric is also involved in the design of a lot of the knives. So uh, what's the, what are a couple models that you've designed for Spyderco? Oh, I uh, worked on the Manix too. Uh, I did a lot of work on the Paramilitary too. Uh, the Tenacious was something I did, the Dodo. Uh, Domino and Dice, aren't those Domino yours? Domino and Dice, yeah, I, I have a few in there, some Clip-It tools. I, I played around with a few of the designs. So just to give you an idea, again, those of you not familiar with him, it's a great person to talk to about uh, the new knives because he has great knowledge on it. So let's go and get started. You ready? Sure. Um, these new knives that I'll be showing you are called Roadies or Roadie. Um, they're a new knife that will be coming out this year. They come in a variety of colors. Um, I want to tell a little story about how the knife and the project was developed. Uh, a few years ago, TSA and some of the airlines got together and they thought it would be okay to make legal knives to carry on airlines. And they began to discuss um, the requirements of what that knife may be. Uh, they published uh, what they thought the requirements could be. Um, and at the time, we thought it was a unique idea and a project to be able to design a knife that would meet those requirements. And we began a project. Now, TSA and the airlines got together and they decided that it, it wasn't a good idea to allow knives on airplanes. But after working with the project, we decided that it was still worth, worthy of going forward with the knife. So some of the things that they discussed uh, in the past was making a knife that had a, a certain length requirement. They really didn't want it too wide uh, this way as well. They didn't lot of, like a lot of contours or a guard on the knife. They were a little concerned about the tip length or, or the tip uh, spear um, and, uh, and how it would open and close, uh, how it would lock. And so we, we took those requirements and we began to build a package. So what we have here is a knife that, that um, is a, a slip resistant knife or a slip joint. Uh, comes with a little a notch joint mechanism we put in there which is similar to a, a slip joint where it has a spring bar but this one has a, a little cut uh, almost like a hammer in the spring bar so that you get a little bit more grab in, in the locked position. Um, so it's a slip joint knife. Uh, when building this knife there were a few requirements in the mechanism that we were trying to hit. One would be that it would, would be easy to open, uh, but stay safe in the pocket. A lot of times if you, you build this spring too strong, then you're trying to overcome a great spring in order to open the thing, uh, and that can be cumbersome. So we wanted it to stay safe in the pocket and stay closed, uh, but, but, but easy enough to pull open. Because we're known for many of our thumb hole openers or one hand open knives, we um, we couldn't do that with this knife. We need a two hand open. And we're not big fans of, of nail nicks because we, we think it tends to hurt the nails um, and, and be difficult to get out. So we developed this, this feature we call a double dent where it's a, a ball nose goes in there and, and creates a little cavity on both sides uh, of equal length uh, or equal diameter and equal depth so that your forefinger and thumb would have something that's easy to grab. As you open the knife, it has a little bit of a, a mid stop uh, so that the knife is a little safer in the closing of the knife uh, and a little safer in its operation. And then when you open the knife, it has a, a fairly secure lock so that you feel comfortable during use and that the knife isn't wobbling around. You, we wanted to have a nice stiff lockup. Now quite often when you're, you make a knife that has a nice stiff lockup, the spring is very strong. Uh, and, and like I was saying earlier, it makes everything a little cumbersome. And that's why we use the notch joint feature in the spring. That additional hammer can grab into that blade and, and give you a little bit more of a secure lock. Uh, this comes with a full flat grind, uh, so it has a less resistance during the cutting. It comes with a nice little forefinger choil here so that when you're choking up on the knife, you can get good control. But if it does accidentally uh, slip on you, it's not going to close on your hand and cut you. Uh, it comes very lightweight uh, with this injection molded handle that has a 3D contour to it so it feels a, a little bit more comfortable in the hand. comes with a little lanyard on there so that you have uh, the ability to tie something to it if you like or attach a ring to it. Um, but it's a nice little high quality knife made in Italy with N690. Comes in a variety of colors. 
uh, and we're really happy to bring this knife to the market. It's good for just about everyday carry anywhere in the world, uh, and it's a high performance uh, little piece. Uh, mid to the end of last year and early this year, we've been working on a project that are, that are called Dog Tag Folders. It's a collaboration with Serge Pachenko. Uh, they're really clever little designs and, and I'll run through these with you. To start with, they're the exact size and shape of your typical dog tag, which, which has this rectangular shape and these nice soft rounded points uh, or ends so that they're, they're not cumbersome during carrying or scratching anything. But, it, but it's called the dog tag because of that exact size and shape of a dog tag. Uh, what Serge was able to do is, is make a nice little combination of that shape and feature and a very functional knife. So with this knife it comes with um, titanium back scale. The titanium has been anodized with a green anodizing to give it the green. Comes with an aluminum backspacer and aluminum cap. Uh, both the aluminum cap and backspacer have also been anodized and those have been blue. Has an S30V blade which is an American powdered metal. When you open the knife uh, it, it is a non-locking folder, so it has this spring bar in there that has a, a little ball joint in there, and that ball is going to keep it in the locked position and is also going to keep it in the closed position. When we were building this knife, the consideration of, of how much strength it takes to open it up and close it, um, and how much strength it takes uh, in the open position for that nice solid lockup as far as wiggle room, uh, was definitely a consideration. So we definitely got this right on this piece and Serge, Serge was definitely a, a help in that. One of the challenges in making a knife like this is also that it doesn't rub the scale tremendously. So you want to have a nice clean build uh, so that it, it functions well um, in this little package. We had some popularity with the knife um, and we've, through customer requests they were saying that the, the colors were a bit much for some of the markets. So we recently came out with an all-black version. The all-black version is much like the, this, the other version, is that it does have a titanium back scale. It does have aluminum caps. Both of the caps are also anodized. Comes with a CPM S30V blade, um, but all the parts are black, even, even the little bit of little screws. Um, and so this is the black variation of the dog tag. Um, and then we began, because uh, Serge was building a, a creative little piece out of G10 that we liked, we decided to, to take that challenge on as well. So this one will be coming out shortly, it's not quite on the market yet, uh, but this comes with a G10 scale. The G10 scale has been milled out, leaving the backspacer integral with the, with the scale itself. It has a little G10 uh, cap on there that's screwed on. Instead of the, the spring bar being integral into the titanium though, this one has a bar that is, that is nested in there, screwed in from the backside, and then the ball lays in there. Uh, a little bit different in the uh, manufacturing of it. When you flip this piece over, it also comes with a carbon fiber layer to give it a, a nice little flare on the back side. Um, but this is also a nice high quality piece and another variation of the uh, existing dog tag designed by Serge. Uh, this is a new collaboration with Gail Bradley. He's a, he's a uh, custom collaborator that we've done a, a few knives with. This is a, a, a new style for him though. What we've done in the past for him was a folder. So this is his first fixed blade collaboration that we've done. We call it the Bradley Bowie because of that, that, that Bowie style shaped blade. But I'll go through some of the features and what makes this knife uh, a very nice user. One is that it's very ergonomic. He did a great job in the size and the shape and the ergonomics of the knife. Uh, it has a nice guard here for forward cutting. It has a nice hook in the back for pull uh, so that it's not going to slip very easily. The G10 is, is, is high quality G10, uh, virtually no void in there, and it's 3D'd out. Um, at the same time as the, the curve of the handle here, it has a flare here so that as you go back, the, the back of the handle is wider than the front so that when you are during hard use or pull cutting, that it, it, it's nice and secure in the hand. It has a full tang, the tang goes all the way to the end, uh, and it's skeletonized, and it has a very nice balance with the weight of the blade and, and the weight of the handle. When he constructed the knife, he used two large lanyard pipes on both sides that, that hold the scale uh, and the, the G10 onto the blade. Why he did this is so that you had an ability to tie something to it if you need to, or if you got into a situation that you wanted to tie the knife to something, that you could, you could tie a stick through these holes or, or have that as an option. 
In the, in the use of the knife, you can have great control when you're holding it fully like this. And then it has a nice little doll forefinger spot here so that you can choke up on the knife and get some nice control. It comes with a full flat grind. Um, it's got a little bit of a swedge here so that when you are passing through good uh, goods that there's less resistance in the cutting. With this knife, we made it out of PSF 27, which is a new steel that we're using. It's the first knife that we've built with it. Um, besides our Mule Team project, which many of our consumers know about. Um, but with, with this knife, it's made in Germany and it's a spray form steel. Uh, so that it becomes very homogenous, much like the other powdered metals we use, uh, but just a, a, different, a little different in its manufacturing process. It, it is a fairly re, uh, corrosive resistant steel with good edge retention and toughness. It's a, it's a nice balance. Uh, with the knife comes a, a Kydex sheath. Uh, it's got a nice lock in, good thumb push off, doesn't destroy the edge, or the cutting edge or the side of the knife, uh, doesn't jiggle around a lot in the, when you're carrying it and make a lot of noise. Comes with a, a little G clip that can go in multiple positions for, for different types of carries. If you're going to draw it, you can get your forefinger in here well to pull it out. And you can also have a little area for a thumb push off if need be. Um, but all, all in all, all around, it's a nice using knife for just about any chore you're going to need. And uh, we're very happy to work with Gail on this new collaboration, the Bradley Bowie. This is a new collaboration with Farad Mare. Um, Farad's known in the custom world for, for his own knives, um, and many of his knives are, are fairly large in their size. That's one of the things that, that he does and, and is good at. So this knife, when it comes to many of our spider codes, is larger than, than many of our knives. Um, I'm going to go through some of the features of this knife, um, but we are, we are proud to work with Farad on it. He calls it the K2. It comes with a nice Reeve integral lock. Um, it's got a nice uh, pattern here to give it a little bit of extra flair in its design. It has a little pin here for the over travel stop so that you're not going to uh, over stretch this lock and, and change the form and function of it. Uh, it comes with full titanium 6AL4V scales. Uh, this is a, a, an interesting steel that it is a, a CPM 10V steel. It's the first and only knife that we're making out of CPM 10V, a very hard steel. Um, this is, uh, comes with a full flat grind, uh, a slight buoy shape. In its construction, it's only using two pins. It uses the pivot pin here and the back pin here to, to hold the entire knife together. It, the the uh, landard here is just nested in there and steps with a little step piece so it's not screwed in. And it's got a completely open back so it's easy to clean, uh, less weight to carry. Um, it's got a large pivot here uh, and a pretty substantial nested stop so that when you are using it, it's got a lot of strength in there. Uh, it comes with a single position clip. One of the, the nice little features he also added to the knife is that he rounded the spine here. Uh, it's, not only is it nice in its appearance, but it's also functional. If you're using this knife for a long period of time, that, that rounded surface is going to feel nice and comfortable on the thumb. It's not going to dig into the thumb. So that, that's why that feature is added there. Uh, it's very ergonomic and, and, and opens with ease, uh, very high quality build. He's got a nice little cutout so that the lock is easy to get to when you need to. Um, but it, it, it's a lot of knife in this package and uh, we're happy to work with uh, Farad on this, uh, the, the Farad K2. Uh, we're beginning to start a new project uh, with a guy named Daryl Kasten. Uh, he came up with this design. This is what he calls the square head. Uh, it's, a, it's little in its size and shape, and it only comes with one scale, so it's a single-sided knife. It has a fairly substantial round hole, so it's easy to access it, easy to open with one hand. Single bevel on, on one side, uh, flat on the other. Um, this comes with CPM S30V, a nice premium American powdered metal. Uh, comes with a, a solid titanium back scale. This backspacer is integral in the titanium, so we really hog out everything but the little backspacer there. Um, it comes with a, an, an interesting liner lock. Uh, it's in the middle rather than all the way down to the side, but it's a, it's a liner lock, so it has a nice solid lockup, not going to close on you. Has a little ball detent in there, and you just Push on this and that ball detent is going to give it nice smooth action and keep it closed uh, in the closed position. Has nice little jimping feature both on the blade and the top so that where you, when you're using it, uh, less slip and resistance on there. Um, it has a nice fit, 
there so that you're not you're not rubbing a lot of things on the, the side of the scale it's just overall construction is very nice comes with a slot here that gives you a lot of flexibility in what you want to tie to it if you want to tie to anything and how you use it a nice custom pivot that gives it a little bit more unique flair in its design um, but it's a very high quality uh, little user that we're enjoying to work with Daryl on um, so this is the new square head designed by Daryl Caston uh, this knife is designed by a custom collaborator that we're working with named Marcin Swish. Uh, he's from Poland. This is our second collaboration with him. If you, if you get to know his knives, uh, he makes very high quality folders. Uh, and I think that this is a good representation of the knives that he makes. For this knife, one of the unique features about this is that it is a titanium on both sides, 6AL4V, uh, but it comes with a nice contoured uh, scale to it. It's, it's tough to tell maybe on video, but it's just slight. It's not, it's not a, a rapidly revolving curvature, uh, but it's very ergonomic and it feels good in the hand. So it was a nice little touch. Comes with a Reeve integral lock, a uh, single piece, and then it comes with this deep pocket wire clip, uh, black G10 backspacer. Uh, the backspacer is raised a little bit above the, the titanium and added jimping, so it, it gives a little bit of extra flair in the feel and the look of the knife comes with jimping on top so it doesn't slide forward on the hand too easily. Full flat grind. Um, this comes with uh, CTS XHP. Um, very, uh, very smooth in its, in its construction. Very easy to uh, open and close. But it's just a nice, well, high quality piece that, that uh, we're happy to work with Marcin on. So this is the Marcin Swish buoy. One of the knives, one of the things we've been doing throughout the years is something we call the Ethnic Series. Uh, the Ethnic Series is a series of knives where we take a knife from different parts of the world that a culture's been using for a period of time, and oftentimes that culture develops the knife into a certain design, style, and shape. This one is part of the Ethnic Series designed by Ed Shemp, and this represents the American buoy. Uh, so it has that nice buoy uh, style blade and the buoy comes in many variations and I think that he did a very good job in the representation of the American buoy and the size and shape that he picked. Uh, one of the challenges in making an ethnic series knife is that all of our knives are high quality folders and they are performance based so they have to function correctly. So this has a nice um, round hole in there that you can also use for opening the knife if you need to. Um, but uh, it, it, it uh, is put in the right size and shape and place uh, to represent the mark of our company well and what we need to in the, in the knife. Many of the buoys and the American buoys had uh, brass guards that were S-shaped. Um, and so we use a brass bolster on this and he used a small S-shape in there to represent some of the S-shaped guards that were in those traditional buoys. Uh, many of them also had a coffin-shaped handle. And so the tail end of this handle has that knife co co coffin shape, um, but it fits very ergonomic in the hand. You can even get up on the knife if you need to. So it's very functional. It comes with a, a G10 scale that has a carbon fiber layer put on top, and that's on both sides, uh, with a deep pocket wire clip that will also flip to both sides for left or right hand carry. The bolster here is nearly a perfect fit. We even did a nice little dovetail there uh, so that, that it is uh, all the way through and, and uh, helps with that, that extra fine fit. Uh, dual skeletonized liners, CPM S30V, uh, flat ground, so it's going to cut very well. Um, but we're, we're happy with this next addition to the Ethnic Series designed by Ed Shemp. Uh, we're doing a series of knives we call the Chaparral Series. Um, the Chaparral series was created so that we had a different handle material or style on a knife that's very high quality and we do it differently on each Chaparral. Uh, this is the third edition to the Chaparral series. Uh, this, this comes with uh, two titanium scales, a CTS XHP blade, uh, full flat grind, um, but one of the nice features about this knife is the overall build and construction and quality along with the design. 
In its build, it's very thin and lightweight. Uh, the blade is very thin so that you get a nice, a nice cut, uh, a thin slice when needed, and it's easy to carry. It comes with a deep pocket wire clip, that full flat grind, and it's very ergonomic when you're holding it. You have a, a nice four finger choil there with, with jimping and jimping on the top so that you can choke up on the knife and, 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 and do what you need to do with the knife. The feature that makes this one a, special is it, it shows a real nice capability of the machining that we can do. And so what, what we did with this is, is every one of these steps is a different layer. Uh, each one divided by ten thousandths of an inch. And every cut on this is a straight line. So it looks like there's little curved patterns in there, but when you stack all the straight lines up, it, it, it gives that curved effect. Uh, effect. Um, and so this is all machined uh, with those little intricate cuts. And then after we machine both sides, we go and we anodize the scale so that you get that blue effect. And then we go back into the machining center and remove part of the anodizing, which gives you that, that, that contrast between the two. And so for, for pure machining time and, and capability, this is an excellent example of, of the capabilities that, that we're able to achieve these days. What kind of machine time are you talking about for a single scale? Uh, it's a long time. Yeah, that seems like a pretty intensive a process. If I remember correctly, we could produce about 12 of these a day. Um, so but a couple hours on a, or a couple on a single by scale, time, you guys do 24 hours a day? Or? Well, well, you're always working on a little bit of chaparrales at a time. Right. Um, and so this is just something that, that uh, we're working on little bit by little bit, and eventually we'll go on to the next chaparral and we'll see where this one goes. Uh, you know, quite frankly, we're working on a few others right now that, that will probably <laughs> be fun to see in the future. Great. Um, but it, it is a great representation of quality and build. As far as gents folders, uh, this is probably going to compete with the best of them. Another thing that, that shows pure ability of quality is the, the backlock on this. Many people don't under, know this, but uh, the backlock is a very difficult lock to make. Um, and, and the requirements of what the lock need, uh, some people don't even know where to start. And so I'm going to go over some of those with you here. One thing that you want to know with your back lock is, is that it has to be nice and smooth. When, when you're building a back lock, it has this curved tang on there, and this hammer has a spring, and it's a surface rubbing a surface all the time. And so how you finish that surface, the shape of that surface, is going to determine how smooth that knife is in the opening and closing. Not many gents folders these days use a back lock because of those adversities you're trying to overcome in its action. Um, you want a nice, good self-close. Uh, that's important. You don't want it to open in your pocket. And you want it to have a nice solid lock. You don't want the blade jiggling all over the place. So you want it to be rock solid. And, and this feature, that th this knife does have both those features. It's rock solid, has a great self-close. The button's in a, in a great location so that when you are during use, you can close the knife if you need to. Um, it, uh, it's not too hard to push. It doesn't have to go too deep. It's in a good location. Uh, and, and, and trying to get the achievement of that with everything else can be quite a challenge. Uh, the spring in here will last a long time. One of the things we do with our, our knives is we, we test them, we cycle test them. And this is going to be able to, to really stand a long period of time before the, the lock is going to begin to break down. Now, how this lock sits in the closed position and how it sits in the open position is very important. The button is in the exact same position in both so that when your thumb or your finger rub down it, it's smooth. Oftentimes with a lot of back locks, when you go from this position to this position, you're chasing a lot of that. And so to be able to achieve that is, is very difficult. Also, what we, we call this area an H because when it all matches up between the blade and the scales, it creates what we call an H because of its shape. And that H has to be smooth in its transition and, and a perfect matchup. And, and that, again, when you're trying to make it smooth and solid and lock up and the button all right, trying to achieve a, a, a perfect H is very difficult. This comes with a wire clip. 
Wire clips are harder to make than stamped clips. Stamped clips are almost like a cookie cutter. You bend and you cut them all at once while stamping them out. With a wire clip, you have to individually form each one. And so it takes longer and it's more expensive. And when you do do that, how you polish and finish the clip is also a concern. You know, when these are built, a little, a straight rod wire comes out and a little bender comes in and grabs the wire and bends it. It's a kind of a CNC process. When that pincher grabs the wire and bends it, it can oftentimes destroy the, the finish of that. Um, and so even the grabbing and the bending of the wire has to be uh, paid attention to so that, that it doesn't destroy the wire clip. And so as you go through the knife, um, a lot of the features on this knife are, are supreme in, in what they were able to bring to the table. Uh, but this is the Chaparral 3, uh, soon, to, soon to be on the market. Judging from the uh, timer on the video, you're very passionate about this one. Yeah, this, is, this, is, uh, this, one, this one puts a lot of time and effort into this. I, you know, if you can build this type of quality and you have the ability, then do it. Uh, not a lot of people could do this even if they wanted to, and, and we're proud of that fact. Uh, so yeah, we do have a little bit of pride in this one. Great, very cool. Uh, this is a new American knife uh, that's coming out on the market. We actually produced it for about a year before the, the public was able to get it. So there, now and then you'll see one on the market. And the reason for that is because it's a collaboration with um, a foundry that helps produce some of the steels we use. At the time, um, the president of the company came and he discussed trying to make something that would represent uh, them entering the knife industry, something that would represent uh, their company well, um, and, and uh, they decided to work with us on one of the knives that, that, that they liked. And so what they did is they came to us and they said, we're looking for a knife of a certain size and a certain shape and we're trying to achieve certain things. And this is the package that we came up with. Uh, one of them is that they wanted a good all around use knife, something that, that anybody can carry for any type of daily chore. And so this has a nice guard in the front. It's very ergonomic. It's got a nice full blade with a full flat grind on there. And if you're gonna use your everyday chores, this, this will be a good knife for that. But at the same time, uh, because this, this factory has a lot of hunters in their company, they wanted something that the, the foundry guys would be able to take on a, a hunting trip with them at the same time. And so as a consideration, uh, this has a little bit of belly in there. You can choke up on the top nice and so that you can get up towards the tip. It's got a tapered back so that when you are getting around the knife, it gives you flexibility in, in what you can get to. Um, it comes with a deep pocket wire clip, so it sits in the pocket nicely. It comes with a very open construction back, so it's easy to clean. Um, the knife is made completely stainless uh, because we're working with a, a steel company on it. Um, it's a completely stainless knife, uh, we, and we only use their materials on it. Including the hardware, the screws and everything. Well, we're using, we're not actually cutting the hardware ourselves. We're using a, a subcontractor to help with some of the hardware. Uh, but the hardware is, is the same materials that they're using as well. That's really cool. Um, the, the lock on this is going to be a little different than a lot of the locks you're going to see in, in uh, our other knives. Uh, we're, we're trying a new cut on this one. What we found is that for strength and reliability, oftentimes the cut on the outside rather than the inside of an inner roll lock um, is a little bit stronger and longer lasting. The reason for that is that from the lock up in the blade all the way to the black back, it's more of a straight line. If you cut the inside, oftentimes you get a little bit of an S in there, and that S can be a weak point. So many of our, 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 our integral locks will have cuts on the outside rather than the inside. But with this one, we, we milled out horizontal. Uh, many of our other ones have, have vertical cuts. Uh, this one has a horizontal cut because we were able to get more of a rib effect here, and we actually got a little bit more strength retention in, in that uh, rib cut. Oh, this is a little piece of paper to keep it from scratching, just came out of the box. Um, it has a little pin in there that's an over travel stop so that if you are pushing on the lock and you happen to over exert your, the strength there, you're not gonna bend the lock and deform it. Um, it uh, it's very ergonomic, easy to use, American made, CPM at our uh, CTSXHP. Um, and uh, we're proud to work with Carpenter on this. Oh, by the way, this is, um, 
a watermark similar to what their logo is to, to represent Carpenter. Um, and that's what that, that nice little engraved patch on there to give it that extra design flair. The foundry. Uh, this is a new product that we're getting into, into called the uh, Zabo Hawk, designed by Lossie Zabo. We've done a, a few collaborations with him, so some people might know a little bit about him. Uh, but he's a police officer, um, also does uh, self-training uh, self courses, uh, has some military background, um, and we're pleased to get to work with Lossie again. So he sent us this hawk uh, as more of an entry-type hawk or uh, a SWAT-type hawk, something you could use. Um, more of an urban environment. And so some of the nice features about this is it has this nice chisel point in there. Uh, it's at this point is at a great location for when you are swinging, trying to get through something or, or, or break something apart. Uh, it, it's in a nice location and strength and thickness to be able to do a lot of what you're trying to achieve. Uh, its length here and its width is uh, very good for, for getting through matter. He put a nice little flat back here so that you can use the back for, for hammering if you need to, uh, but you can also lay down this and batten it through something if you need to. A very nice feature. He has a, a little pry at the back so that if you need to get into something and use the Mac, you have that ability. He's got a thick piece of D2 and it's solid all the way through, so it's just a nice chunk of, of steel that will give you some capabilities uh, to get through something or, or uh, do what you need to do. It comes with uh, a fairly um, substantial piece of G10 here, but the G10 is machined out so that it's still uh, comfortable in the hand. It's, it's a full fistful. Uh, large screws in there so that it's not going to come apart very easily. He's got a nice curve in here too, so that if you want to tie something like to this hole or this hole and use this as a handle, or you need to use this for something other than, than the, the, the pry bore or the hammer or the axe, you have that curved handle if you need to. Um, but this is a, a nice collaboration we're working with Lossie. comes with a nice little Kydex sheath that pops over it. Um, and it should be out very soon. That's the last one, right? It is. Thank you very much for coming by. Thanks for your time, Eric. We'll have these available at goinggear.com as they come out.